internship season again. The Let's go. first time of the fucking year. Unfortunately, I'm back to that stage where you have to find your first internship. Like, the first one is always the absolute yeah. worst. It's such a grind to get that first internship. I finally did it last year, and then I lost it because of coronavirus. Fortunately, this time around, I have the king of internships. <laughs> <Next> <laughs> like, literally, Facebook, Google, Bloomberg, Amazon, Uber, Lyft, literally fucking everything in the world. So hopefully he can help me make my resume not a complete piece of shit. First thing I want to do is critique my own resume, because mm. I can acknowledge this is complete trash. The last time I touched I, this, it looks like, fine already. <laughs> dude, my GPA, this is crazy. My GPA went up, dude. This shit went up to 3.98. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> Holy. I, I remember calling ASU for like, I was like complaining about something because I wanted them to put me in like an easier class. Yeah. Like, just like give me like leave it. I was like, yeah, I'm really struggling in school. Please help me. And they're like, okay, well, I pulled up your records. It says here you have a 3.98 GPA. Yeah, I think like nobody gives a fuck what you did in high school, so I think I'm just gonna delete that entire fucking thing. This road test is what got me this internship. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely staying on. This is staying on, I think, because I actually made a REST API, which is pretty cool, pretty useful. I think I'm probably gonna delete this project, but I don't know, it has some good points. Like I did use the MongoDB database, which in Silicon Valley, dude, they're like all using, like all the startups are all using MongoDB now. Mm -hmm. So having that actually might, looked really good. You haven't added all of your YouTube projects? I haven't added a single one. I haven't touched this uh, resume since school. Like, that's when my GPA was wrong. And personally, I want to delete this entire section because I think it's all stupid. Well, I want to put the YouTube into the experience. Uh, hackathon, uh, I don't think anyone gives a fuck. Uh, the governor recognizes my computer sounds fail, who gives a fuck. Award a dean's list, that's obvious. You could tell that from the GPA, so you don't even need this. Uh, Awarded ambassador for the perfect SAT math or right, high school. Nobody gives a fuck about high school. So you don't even need to have YouTube as an experience. I would just put the projects at the top and then include all the projects you did for YouTube. Do you think I should like include like my subscribers and views and shit? Yeah, I think you should, but separate it from like just like throw it at the bottom, right? As like an accomplishment. Projects should be higher than experience. I think so. That doesn't make sense. Because they're more even actual do. projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my experience is all bullshit. But I've just been hearing like the advice, like, like experience obviously is so much more important, but I guess if you're at a stage like I am where it's all it's bullshit so, experience. It's so heavily skewed towards like, you get really beefy projects, and then like the experience is... True. Like, I definitely do want these projects up there for sure. Yeah, put them at the top. Is it, is it chill that I have education first? Especially because of the 3.98? Yeah, I would put that first. But I've heard like that advice, like put like the coursework, like I've done like data structures. Oh, and like shit. relevant coursework and yeah. just list them off like that. Like, yeah. I have a bunch, but I feel like, I mean, everyone is doing the same degree of computer science. We're all doing the same courses. Like, why does it even matter? Well, I think people want to know that you've at least taken these courses. But I feel like that'd be obvious if I'm already like two years in, like if I'm already a junior. I that's fair, know. that's fair. I feel like this looks so basic. I feel like everyone's resume has this exact theme. Like just this white, boring shit. <laughs> I downloaded your resume. Oh. Like, before we were even friends, I have a folder oh, of cringing. everyone <laughs> who I looked up to with his resume. Yeah. And I, just, I would just try to like learn from them. But you had this like blue... Yeah, like a blue box on the side. So yeah, yeah. Yours I think I think one thing. Yeah, one thing. So I wouldn't go hard on the aesthetic of the resume. I think people sense that you go hard on it. It looks very try hard. You know what I mean? When people mm -hmm. start adding, like I keep seeing this thing where people add bars for each skill, saying, "Oh, this is how That's efficient great. I am." You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and if Those, you're rating yourself, it's yeah, just yeah, like that. Or All right, so basically this is what my resume was after we we're done with Chris Teresa. So we moved the projects up. I added YouTube as a real resume and I got rid of the award section. And then I wanted to ask one more person that I really trusted in the whole interview process. And this other dude is amazing. He's an uh, intern at Facebook and Bloomberg, but more importantly, he works at Two Sigma, which is honestly above Fang. So I got his opinion and he told me that he actually recommended that I put a lot of my old stuff back in. He told me that was the stuff that made me unique and made me stand out. So I kind of agree with him at the end. So I ended up putting all of that stuff back in. He also helped me change some of the wordings up, semantics. Here's what my final resume looks like. All right, here is my final resume. Let's go through it together. So the school I go to, I'm doing a bachelor's in computer science. I'm in my third year. That's my GPA. I added these projects because these are the projects that I want the most. Honestly, I could have fit in like three more projects that I was really proud of, but at a certain point, I think my projects were just becoming redundant. So I added YouTube as an experience. Of course, you gotta 
flex the thing, you know, nominated for hat. Yeah. Um, this wannabe internship that was really just some failed startup. Uh, I added the competitions. Here's one thing I actually forgot to mention. I actually won a third place at an algorithm competition at ASC, which I forgot about, but included that in, put back the Hawaii built in because that does make me pretty unique and i don't know did for shits and giggles put that in and i turned this into two lines because i don't even think this is that important it's just to get through keywords so here it is here's the resume that i'm going to apply to all jobs going forward for this year now let's talk about referrals i want to really apply with referrals so far i got a referral for google amazon oracle tesla and i'm pretty sure i'm going to get one for bloomberg uh square i'm not sure anymore Qualtrics, I'm not sure anymore. I had one. I had two people that were going to refer me to Facebook, but they both ended up bailing. So uh, I actually need a Facebook referral. If any of you guys are watching this and you work at a tech company that's not listed here and you want to give me a referral, then email me at trendblack12 at gmail.com. No, but really, like if you guys would want to give me referrals, I would highly appreciate that. But uh, yeah, so, so far I've only really applied to a few companies. We're definitely going to see this list get really long down the line, but I haven't gotten any interviews yet. So hopefully we get some interviews soon and I'll keep you guys updated with the whole interview process and everything. I feel like I need to unlist my videos about tech lead and Matt Tran. Not because I'm ashamed of those videos. I love those videos and I'm really glad that I got my opinions out about them. Those videos are really fucking holding me back. Here's what I think is happening. Here's why I think my new content won't grow. Who? So YouTube needs to test your videos with a certain group of people to see if it wants to promote that video. So YouTube, who is it going to promote it to at first? It's going gonna, it's gonna to promote it to the person who just watched a video on my channel 10 minutes ago. And what video did they probably watch? Some Matt Tran or Tech Lead bullshit. So they're going to watch that, and then YouTube's going to be like, okay, let's test out his new video and show it to them. Are they going to click it? No, absolutely they're not going to click it. So then the overall click rate goes down, so then YouTube is never going to promote it to a wider group of people. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to unlist every fucking drama video. Fuck it, dude. Fuck it. I'm going to do it. Fuck it. I did it. I enlisted all my drama videos <laughs> looks like now I really need a real job <laughs> I feel good about this decision and I think I think this is this is something that money can't buy feeling good about your decisions <laughs> there is one big bright side to this entire thing though so I never wanted to unlist my videos before because I felt like that would make them win you know like Matt has been trying to get me to unlist my videos since the beginning of time and if he was still like blackmailing me right now, I wouldn't enlist it. I would intentionally harm myself just to spite him. You know, I'm such a petty fucking person. But the reason why I didn't want to unlist it before is because what triggered him was that if you looked up his name, my videos would pop up and he didn't like the negative publicity. But the thing is, I get the best of both worlds now because if I unlist my video, if you look up his name, you still see like 10 other, it's the other people that made videos about him that keeps me in the safe. Like, if you look up his name, you'll still see a bunch of videos about him. I don't know, I kind of won. Honestly, checkmate. <laughs> I have decided that I'm going to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube in under a minute. I don't know, like a little known thing about me is I'm always learning like really stupid, just flex hobbies, just because I think it's fun. Like I, I know how to backflip and I know how to juggle and I know how to do a bunch of random stuff just because I think it's cool. Plus, I kind of like puzzles, which I'm going to regret saying in about three days when I have to start doing lead code. And I'm officially back on the lead code grind. I need to start preparing for my interviews again. I currently have no idea how to solve a Rubik's Cube. I just bought one on Amazon. This is a mini one. I got it for like a quarter. Until my real one comes in, I'm just going to practice with this thing. Good news, my Rubik's Cube came in. I know how to solve them, finally, but I want to get my time up. This is such a pointless skill that I'm practicing. Me taking up Rubik's Cubing is the dumbest thing I could have done. I'm gonna try and solve this, and I'm gonna time it, and hopefully I'm faster next episode. Ah! Okay, I don't know how fucking long that was. Probably like two minutes or some shit. I figured it out. I think I know why my videos suck. I'm not funny.
I watched a casually explained video, and that's pretty much everything I know about comedy. So I'm gonna read a book called... I'm gonna read a book called, uh... The Serious Guide to Joke Writing, How to Say Something Funny About Anything. One of the things I've heard the most is, you can't learn to be funny by learning the rules of comedy. And I'm now learning the rules of comedy. So this will probably go horribly. I don't know. Maybe I should practice doing some stand-up. Like, it'd probably be so cringe, but it'd just be like a good learning experience. And it would just translate into my videos being way better, right?